I look like he's starting. Well, no, he's practising, he's setting up his... Morning, Jeff. Morning. That's better. I couldn't get on then. I don't know why. <laughs> they said you were on and I could hear you rustling your papers. <laughs> yeah. Um, yes. everything. Do you know what this morning's reading is? <clears throat> Say that again, sorry. Do you know what this morning's reading is? No, I don't. I'm sorry. No. Neither do I. <laughs> <laughs> I can find out. Hold on, it's here in a minute. Of course, I haven't got anything with me here, so... No. Are you all right? Yes, thank you. We're in Grange. Yeah, hey, all right. Good morning, Jeff. Can't see him. Where's that? Yeah. <laughs> Where are we? 13th of February. Mark 9, 14 to 32. Oh, great. Thank you, Jeff.
Okay, <clears throat> I've got the feeling that I'm unmuted. Uh, it's good to see you this morning. Uh, welcome to all you folks that have braved the weather. Uh, I hope that you've all got a pen as you were coming in because we're going to have a maths test later on. <laughs> no, no, we're not. It's something to do with the vicar. We don't quite know what, but I think all will be revealed later on. But it's lovely to see you. And if there's any this morning that's in for maybe the first time we give you a special welcome and we hope that you feel at home and we hope that this hour that we spend together will be a blessing to you okay my name is phil uh, i'm one of the readers here and uh, it's my job this morning to convene the service and make sure you feel really welcome so i i trust i've done that let's have a little word of prayer right at the very beginning shall we 
<clears throat> Heavenly Father, thank you for this privilege of coming to worship you. We thank you for the freedom that we have in our country uh, to come and, and, and uh, with, with church doors wide open. And, and worship you. And so we just ask you to be with us this morning. Bless each and every one that is represented here. We pray for the ones that are uh, listening on Zoom uh, across this area, and we ask your blessings upon them as well this morning, and we ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay. Uh, we've got our opening hymn. It's a lovely hymn. It says, Before the Throne of God Above. Okay, let's stand and sing together. Some people quicker on their feet than I am. It's uh, it's time in our service where we come to uh, what we call confession, which is just saying that we're sorry to God for the things that maybe we have done wrong or maybe we should have done and we haven't done. And so I trust that each one of us will uh, be able to say the words in yellow. And I'll read the words in white, because we're not always gentle, kind, humble, meek, and patient as you want us to be. Father, in your mercy, please forgive us. 
We say, think and do things which hurt others and hurt you. Father, in your mercy, please forgive us. We find it difficult to put up with and forgive others. Father, in your mercy, please forgive us. And we don't include you in all that we do. Father, in your mercy, please forgive us. So may Almighty God, who sent his Son into the world to save sinners, bring us his pardon and peace, now and forever. Amen. Those are lovely words. Now let's stand and declare our faith. This is what we as Christians believe. If you don't uh, register with the words, and if you don't, just, just, just listen to uh, uh, our affirmation of, of what we believe. Now, do you believe and trust in God the Father, source of all being and life, the one for whom we exist? We believe and trust in him. Do you believe and trust in God the Son, Jesus Christ, who to human nature died for us and rose again? We believe and trust in him. Do you believe and trust in God the Holy Spirit? who gives life to the people of God and makes Christ known in the world. We believe and trust in him. This is the faith of the church. This is our faith. We believe and trust in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Please sit down while we have our church family news. Fantastic, thanks, Phil. Uh, good to see you. Uh, if you don't know me already, my name is Chris, uh, the vicar here. We've got quite a lot of stuff coming up. Um, just worth saying as well, we send an, an, an email. It's supposed to be weekly, but I don't always manage it every week. Uh, with this information on, it's why we don't have a notice sheet. Uh, we're saving paper. Um, if you want to be part of that weekly email, if you want me to put your name on the list, just come and chat to me at the end, and I can uh, do that for you. Um, so there's some flies in the foyer for the community cafe. It's starting this Thursday at Church of the Saviour, two till four. It's for anyone. Uh, maybe, maybe just need a bit of company to come in, have a brew, have a biscuit, have a chat. It's not overtly religious or anything like that. It's just a chance uh, to have a chat uh, if you fancy some company. So two till four every Thursday, Church of the Saviour, starting this week. We've got a couple of prayer meetings coming up. So on Wednesday 23rd uh, for our Christians Against Poverty Centre and on Saturday 26th for our whole benefits, all our churches, all our parishes, we meet to pray 10 a.m. at Church of the Saviour. We've got a ladies craft event coming up. Do you want to say anything about that, Lisa? Or? Well, just to mention that people are going to be able to quite impressive people who just did. I'm All clothes. Excellent. Sounds fun. And that's not even with kids involved, is it? Uh, see Lisa or Sheila for uh, tickets for about £10 uh, Wednesday, 9th of March. We've got a Lent course coming up just after that five weeks, which takes us into Easter. Uh, so what we're doing is, is uh, most of the home groups are uh, not meeting on their evening, and instead we're all coming together uh, to meet and do a Lent course together. Maybe you're not already a member of a home group, maybe you've not done Bible study before, but you, Lent's traditionally a time where Christians have slowed down a bit, spent a bit of time looking at the Bible, going deeper in faith. And there's two options, really. Uh, you can join on Zoom. Uh, starting on Monday the 14th of March, or you can join in person at Church of the Saviour, Wednesday the 16th of March. There'll be a sign-up sheet uh, next week because we need to order booklets for the course. So if you'd like to be involved in that, have a think and I'll sign up in the weeks to come. And there's a youth uh, event for ages 11 to 17 at the end of March as well. Again, if you want more information about that, uh, come and chat to me. We've got a couple of bits of information as well, uh, some news. Anyone got any birthdays to celebrate? Come on a birthday? 
No? Um, any exciting news to share? We've got a bit of exciting news to share. Uh, Rachel's pregnant. Rachel's my wife. Christmas due on the 9th of August. Yeah, so we appreciate your prayers for three children. Um, now, you all got given a pen on the way in and, and people were getting nervous. I've been told to make sure you give them back on the way out. Okay. What we're doing is we're doing an anonymous questionnaire. Okay, so there's no names or anything on this. Um, we've got our annual church meeting coming up after Easter. And part of that, we want to understand where our church is, how people are getting on. Um, so it's quite, do you want to, so we'll hand these out. Um, it's based around the three priorities of the diocese, making disciples, being witnesses, and growing leaders. Now, if you could spend some time doing that. If you're a new attendee, if you've been less than five times, there's a little section for you. Uh, if you're more regular, there's a bigger section for you. If you're tech savvy, there's a QR code, so you can do that on your phone and fill it a Google form in online if you find that easier. And again, that's anonymous as well. We won't see your email address. We're going to have 10 minutes to do that. Whilst you're doing that, if you've got young kids, uh, if, you, if you're aged 11 plus, please fill it in with your parents. If you're a child and you think, how am I going to control my children as I fill this form in? Uh, we're going to play musical statues at the back. So send your kids to the back. We'll play musical statues. Me and my wife will run it and spend about 10 minutes doing that for me.
such love, before such grace, I will let the walls come down. You know that you are welcome here Before such love, before such grace I will let the walls come down I will let the walls come down And I will sing my songs of love Calling out across the earth The King has come is alive. Christ the champion of our faith.
It's rising up from coast to coast, from north to south and east to west. The cry of hearts that love your name, which with one voice we will proclaim. Okay, <clears throat> let's stand and sing our song, Super Sad. Save the day, take our sins away. Who can rescue us with mighty power? Super Savior to the rescue, Super Savior, mighty to save. Look, look, here comes Jesus, up, up, and out of the grave. Super Savior to the rescue, Super Savior. Crusher, sin smasher, who's the mighty super savior? Jesus, he's a death crusher, sin smasher, who's the mighty super savior? Jesus. Save the day, take our sins away. Who can rescue us with mighty power? Super Savior to the rescue, Super Savior, mighty to save. Look, look, here comes Jesus, up, up, and out of the grave. Super Savior to the rescue, Super Savior. young folks drift off to uh, crash or Sunday school. Okay. <clears throat> we'll just we'll just have a, a word of prayer and ask a blessing upon our young folks absolutely super to see him in church let's just pray heavenly father we ask you as these young people learn more about you it will register in their hearts and be life-changing and so we ask you to just bless the teachers and everything that is done or said in the crash for jesus sake amen okay our psalm today is psalm 18 uh, we're reading the first 15 verses because it's uh, a little bit long but it's a lovely, lovely song. It's on page 551, I think, in your Bibles. It's on page 977 in my Bible, if anybody's interested. <laughs> okay, Psalm 18. I love you, O Lord, my strength. The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer, 
My God is my rock in whom I take refuge. He is my shield and the horn of my salvation, my stronghold. I call to the Lord who is worthy of praise and I am saved from my enemies. The cords of death entangle me. The torrents of destruction overwhelm me. The cords of the grave coil around me. The snares of death comfort me. Comfort me. In my distress, I called to the Lord. I cried to my God for help. You armed me with strength for battle. Wrong page. From this temple, he heard my voice. My cry came before him into his ears. The earth trembled and quaked. The mountains of the, the foundations of the mountains shook. They trembled because he was angry. Smoke rose from his nostrils. Consuming fire came from his mouth. Burning coals blazed out of it. He parted the heavens and came down. The dark clouds were under his feet. He mounted the cherubim and flew. He soared on the wings of the wind. He made darkness his covering, his canopy around him. The dark rain, clouds of sky, out of the brightness of his presence, clouds advance with hailstones and bolts of lightning. The Lord thundered from heaven. The voice of the Most High resounded. He shot his arrows and scattered the enemies. Great bolts of lightning routed them. The valleys of the sea were exposed and the fountains of the earth laid bare. Okay, that's the verse 15. There's something going wrong somewhere there. I'm sure you'll sort it out. Our next reading is from Mark chapter 9. And then we're going to have our guest preacher who has come all the way from Livesey Branch. He's going to be talking to us. That's John. The next reading is taken from Mark chapter 9, getting to read at verse 14. When they came to the other disciples, they saw a large crowd around them, and the teachers of the law arguing with them. As soon as all the people saw Jesus, they were overwhelmed with wonder and ran to greet him. What are you arguing with them about? He asked. A man in the crowd answered, Teacher, I brought you my son, who is possessed by a spirit that has robbed him of speech. Whenever it seizes him, it throws him to the ground. He foams at the mouth, gnashes his teeth, and becomes rigid. I asked you disciples to drive out the spirit, but they could not. All oh, unbelieving generation. Jesus replied, how long shall I stay with you? How long shall I put up with you? Bring the boy to me. So they brought him when the spirit saw Jesus. It immediately threw the boy into a convulsion. He fell to the ground and rolled around, foaming at the mouth. Jesus asked the boy's father, how long has he been like this? From childhood, he answered. He has often thrown him into fire or water to kill him. But if you can do anything, take pity on us and help us. If you can, Jesus said, everything is possible for him who believes. Immediately, the boy's father exclaimed, I do believe, help me overcome my unbelief. When Jesus saw that a crowd was running to the scene, he rebuked the evil spirit. You deaf and mute spirit, he said, I command you, Come out of him and never enter him again. The spirit shrieks, convulsed him violently and came out. The boy looked so much like a corpse that many said, he's dead. But Jesus took him by the hand and lifted him to his feet and he stood up. After Jesus had gone indoors, his disciples asked him privately, why couldn't we drive it out? He replied, this kind, of, this kind can come out only by prayer. They left that place and passed through Galilee. Jesus did not want anyone to know where they were because he was teaching his disciples. He said to them, the son of man is going to be betrayed into the hands of men. They will kill him. And after three days, he will rise. But they did not understand what he meant. and were afraid to ask him about it. This is the word of the Lord. Now, this must definitely be one of the advantages of only having to preach because it's already unmuted. 
I still it says I'm John. I, I I'm not really a guest from somewhere else. I'm, I'm part of a team of four readers. Normally, guests have like a reserved car parking space and a red carpet to the door and a welcome. And all I get is is a service reg John, Can you make sure you sign it? Which is which is exactly what you've got to do. Because I did the same thing to the bishop in the interregnum. He smiled and said, "Thank you, John." <clears throat> Very kind, of, really. Um, this is not an easy passage, so I'm only going to take parts of it. I'm going to focus in on parts of it, but let's start by thinking where we are in Mark's gospel. Before I do, I think it might be a really good idea if I pray for what I'm going to say and how we're going to receive it. So, Lord, this is your word. It's not my word, it's the word that you have revealed to us. Help us as we listen to really understand what he's saying, to use it to test our attitudes towards you and to encourage a response that draws us closer to you. And this we ask in your name, amen. Now last, last week, Philip, we're talking about what we call the transfiguration, where Jesus went onto a mountain with three of his closest disciples, and they saw Jesus in a very, very different light. The other nine had been left behind to do the work of being a disciple. So when they came back down, Jesus and the other three, there was an argument going on with a large crowd and there was an argument and the teachers of the law essentially um, the Jewish religious leaders were arguing with them which is quite common in Jesus' time for the religious leaders uh, the Jewish religious leaders to argue with Jesus and the disciples and as soon as everybody saw Jesus, they were overwhelmed with wonder and ran to him. I think if I was one of the nine, I'd feel a little upset about that and offended. But, but that's the way it was, because, of course, Jesus was who he was. He was God's son, and he was beginning to get a reputation of being a very, very special person, because he was telling them, about what was going to happen to him, how he was going to die, how he would be crucified, and in that process would allow us to get closer to God. So, there was this man there who'd arrived and was very concerned about his son. Teacher, I brought you my son who is possessed by a spirit that's robbed him of speech. And he goes on to explain some of the other symptoms he has. And what is very, very obvious is he is desperate. And I think very few of us will have not been in a situation in life where we are desperate because what's happening to those around us or what's happening to ourselves. And the first thing to point out is that the man came and explained his situation and he acknowledged his weakness. And that was something that Jesus wants from us when we come to him. Not to come to him with all guns blazing, telling him how wonderful we are. But Jesus would not start to act in this man's life, in this little boy's life, until the man recognised his weakness. One of the modern inventions I've heard about is Alexa. Alexa. And God isn't like Alexa. God, do this. God, do that. God, do the other. God isn't like that. We don't come 
as masters to a computer machine become as frail human beings to the God who made us. And so they brought the young boy to Jesus. When Jesus, when the spirit saw Jesus, it immediately threw the boy into a convulsion. He fell on the ground and rolled around, foaming at the mats. And Jesus asked, how long has he been like this? <coughs> now, Jesus would know exactly what this boy's problem was. But in asking his father, he was really saying to his father, how much faith do you have? And what have you done about this person's position is your son's illness so far? Because clearly he was of a, a reasonable age. He didn't tell exactly how old he was, but he wasn't a baby in arms. And it gives the impression that um, the father hadn't done anything. And Jesus wanted to know what he'd been doing. So that comes the answer. He's been like this from childhood and explained the sort of things that happens. But if you can do anything, take pity on us and help us. If you can do anything, take pity on us and help us. And it seemed as though he was doubting Christ's power, but not his compassion. He had seen perhaps in what had been going on in the early part of Jesus' ministry, how he healed people, how he cured people, how he helped people, and how he brought them to faith. We might have doubted Christ's power, but not his compassion. And Jesus challenged him, if you can, that's what you've just said to me, if you can, said Jesus, everything is possible for one who believes. Now, the key thing there is, going back to my example from Alexa, it's only possible if it's necessary in terms of God's will for our life. Because he has a plan for our lives. He has a plan for the lives of the people around us. So when we pray and when we ask, God will respond, not like that in a puff of smoke and whizzo and it all sorts itself out. But if it's the right thing for us in the situation we find ourselves in. Now, I'm not going to play down the anguish that that causes in people's lives. For many years, I was a volunteer at the hospice. I've worked in a few different occupations, a few different roles especially in my role at church from 35 years as a reader, and you've seen a lot of things. And there are times when your heart really goes out to people, and you would love to wave that magic wand, but for that particular point in time, that isn't God's will, and it's hard to come to terms with. So the father then said, immediately, he exclaimed, I do believe Help me overcome my unbelief. Now, it's often said people have two ways they think they can get to heaven. They can work the passage there, which is works, or they can believe. It's very clear what that belief has to be. It has to believe in the fact that Jesus came to, to sort the barrier out between us and God because of our behavior. And only his death on the cross can do that. So we have to confess before God when we want something to be done. I'm only human. I'm not perfect. I might be working my way down that road, but I'm certainly not perfect. I'm only human. We see, God is prepared to accept that from us. Later on, we get to the crucifixion Easter, and there are three crosses and three people. Jesus in the middle, supposedly, two thieves on either side. And one of the thieves said to me, almost, Father, accept me, Jesus, accept me into your kingdom. 
because I know what I've done. So there wasn't a massive amount of um, hard work or anything like that to get into that point. It was the sheer faith of what Jesus could do. And it gets very interesting. We'll give you a second, second example now. Um, some people may have come across it, especially in medicine and things like that, that when we're confronted by a really bad piece of news, our first reaction is disbelief. No, that can't happen to me. They've got the test results wrong. And then there's anger. Why has this happened to me? I'm a good person. And then there is a negotiation. Well, if I, can, if I do this, will you do that? Things should be okay. And then finally, there is acceptance. No, it's not that simple, people backwards and forwards. But the point I'm trying to make is that our faith is not based on a negotiation with God. It doesn't work like that. But sometimes very hard for us to believe because we live in a society that's an instant society. We expect to go to big fast food chains and what we want is there. We expect to go to supermarkets and what we want is there. But our faith is much more than that. It's an acceptance of who God is and how he lives in our lives. Eventually, once the crowd hadn't quite come, he casts out what has happened from the little boy. And that was good. And then he goes on to predict at the end of this passage, his death for a second time. And that's really quite interesting because he's shown his sovereign power. He's shown he can get rid of that, that force from that little boy that other people haven't been able to do. But what he's then going to do is to go down a cross. Not a magic wand, I'm going to say, people bang. The only way you're going to be able to come to me is if I die on that cross. I have to give up almost all of who I am in terms of being God so that you can have access to God. And that's a very interesting contrast. But what about us? Uh, when we're, we're faced with a crisis, do we start off by acknowledging our own responsibility or do we say, oh, it's somebody else's fault? And we're, we're quite good at that. We're almost taught to do that in this consumer society we live in. But really the only way we're going to make any headway with God is accepting that it is our fault. And that's hard. The next thing is, do we believe that God will act? The answer is, we should do, we must do, but we've also got to accept that God will not always act in the way that we expect, because sometimes we actually get more, not less, but sometimes we have to understand that less is where we are at the moment. Do we actually also believe that to be a good Christian we don't have to work hard and do this and do that and do the other. Once we've acknowledged who God is, once we've, through faith, taken on board Jesus, I said, yeah, then we can work hard, but we need people who will hand the Bibles out, get the building ready, join on the sound system, all that sort of thing we need to do. But we don't do that to get in God's good books. We've already got ourselves in God's books by our perfection of faith. And the final one is a warning, and, and this is a very severe warning. Um, there are some people who try to do what that father was asking of Jesus. And you read the passage and you realise that was a very, very evil force within the little boy. It, it, we cannot, of our own rights, do things about it. In the 70s and 80s, there's some terrible things happened when people tried. So if you know of that situation, just simply pray, but more than anything else, contact Chris. He has experts within the diocese he can go to, to understand how to resolve that problem. 
and I've seen, I've had conversations with my previous vicars here and at the Saviour who said, well, I went to see X and, and that was it. Now, I can find out what happened, but that was it. If, if Chris isn't here, if you speak to one of the four of us, we then can, can move <laughs> on. But please, 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 more than anything else, don't try and do it yourself. So where do we stand then? What is our attitude towards our faith? Are we taking that step of faith? What is our attitude to what we expect to do God to do for us? Is it do it? Or is it, is this the right thing for you, for God, for you to do in my life, God? I shall leave you to think about that. Perhaps this is a bad week for this sermon because it's half term. And I think you're probably quite busy. Most of you are probably quite busy this week with half term. But if you do have a few moments, just reread that passage, very challenging passage, and think about some of the things I've said. But let's just bow, bow our heads, shall we? <clears throat> Lord, we're grateful for your word. At times it challenges us, and it doesn't make our faith very easy. But what it does do is point to you. It points to how you loved us so much you gave your life for us. And how that has to be the starting point, acknowledging that, of anything we do in your name. And this we ask in your name. Amen. Back to you, Philip. I've left it all mooted. John needs no introduction. <laughs> Thank you, Philip. Shall we pray? On this, our communion Sunday, Lord, we thank you for the gift of your supper. We are called to remember the price that Jesus paid for our sin and for our communal remembrance together at this table. May we never become complacent about the enormous price that was paid for our sin. <clears throat> Help us to honour your holy name. And when we meet together, as brothers and sisters in Christ, thank you for your word and the wonderful truths it contains. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Loving Father, we thank you that we are free to worship at all times, wherever we are, and especially now this morning in our church. We ask that you help us to pray with our hearts and our minds as we lift our voices in praise to you to bring you our worries, our joys, our turmoil, our grief, and our peace. May we always be aware of the needs of others, whatever these people are, whatever we need, whatever they need, whatever we hear about in the news or hear about locally. Give us a mind, Lord, to think about others before ourselves. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Loving Father, we believe that the church is the body of Christ, founded on the rock that Jesus Christ, the Son, our living God, gave to us. Through his disciples and through Paul, they built the church on the rock of Christ. We understand that the privileges we enjoy here are your will for your people. But we grieve for those who don't share these basic human rights. Help us as we struggle in life to see your compassion. Keep us aware of your responsibility to reach out in compassion to those whose lives are in constant struggle for survival. Show them your love, Lord, and give them your peace. That calm assurance, Lord, that you give to us. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Bless and guide Elizabeth, our Queen. Guide all in her government to do what is right and godly for our nation. Strengthen Julian, our Bishop, in his time of recovery and for all who serve in the diocese. We pray for here at home in our benefice, for Chris, our vicar, and his family, for Philip, Jeff, Duncan and John, and all who need the benefits of the Redeemer. We pray for the extended services in our town with the food bank 
the Christians Against Poverty. And we pray for our students here and the staff at our school, that they might find you, Lord, in the work they learn all about you. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. We turn our thoughts to those in our congregation who are sick in mind, body, or soul. We ask, Lord, that you comfort them. Give them your calm assurance. We pray especially for those vulnerable and those people still struggling with this virus. We pray for Kate and Yvonne, Sandra, Val and Celia, John, Peter and Gail, Lorraine, Catherine and Dave, George, Nan and Tony, Claire, Norman and Peter, Keith, Joe and Margaret B. And we take a moment's silence to think of anybody in our lives who we feel needs God's loving touch. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind or spirit. Give them courage and hope in their troubles and bring them the joy of your salvation. We spend a moment thinking about the family and friends of Jean Clegg. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. We thank you, Lord, that you are a great God. Thank you that you forgive us and help us to prepare ourselves for your return. Amen. Thank you, John. We are going to welcome the young ones back. Okay, hand over to you. Just made an amazing discovery. I think we've basically got a full band in the youth group. So it comes to the time of service now where we share the Lord's Supper together. The Lord is here. Spirit Lift up your heart. Let us give back to the Lord our God. It's a time to pray. It's a time to pray. the Lord of all creation. In your love, you made us for yourself. When we turned away, you did not reject us, but you came to meet us in your son. In Christ, you shared our life that we might live in Him and He in us. You are the wise arms of our hearts and made for all the purpose of our sin. The night He betrayed us, some with His friends, He took bread. He gave that, He broke it, He gave it to them, saying, Take heed, this is my body which is given to you. Do this in remembrance of me. And then the sort of taking the sort of wine, he gave that and said, Drink this all of This is my blood of the covenant, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Amen. This blood was shed for all. 
As we proclaim his death and celebrate his rising in glory, send the Holy Spirit that this bread and this wine may be to us. And what you have heard about the Lord Jesus Christ. See Jesus and drink his soul in us. Make us one in Christ our Redeemer. The whole church around the world, we are going to be our sacrifice and praise. And lift our voice to join the eternal Son of Heaven, saying, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord. God of the power in our hands, heaven and earth are full of your glory, O Son in the highest. So, as our Savior to us, I say the prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins. We us not to share the body of Christ. We are not familiar with the word of communion at the moment, we did the bread into the line and drop it into your hands so you can sanitize on your way up. You can now come to the front here or uh, just take the back and fill you all right and be back there. Um, if you're trusting Jesus and following him, uh, then uh, we'll think that we'll take you in the if, um, if you're not sure, uh, or maybe you. Children, if you've not been confirmed, come up for prayer, just uh, cross your arms, uh, open to scratch the sit, and reach out for mercy. You're very welcome to do that as well. So, draw me with them. Receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which you gave me, and his blood, which you shed for me. Eat and drink and remember us that he died for you, and put them in your hearts by faith. Behold the Lamb who bears our sins away, slain for us. And we remember the promise made that all who come in faith find forgiveness at the cross. And so we share in this bread. that healed 
the death that brings us life paid the price to make us one It's been good to be in God's house this morning. It's a real blessing to me to see you folks here. And I trust that each and every one of you just tune into the message and the reading of God's word and think about it as you go uh, throughout the week. We'll stand and sing our final hymn now, which is a, a lovely, lovely hymn. Let's stand. gift of grace is Jesus my redeemer there is no more for heaven now to give he is my joy my righteousness and freedom my steadfast love my deep and boundless peace to this I
It's good to be in God's house this morning. Let's just pray now as we go our different ways. Heavenly Father, we ask you to be with each family represented here, from the youngest to the oldest. We pray that the houses that they come from may sense your presence and your, uh, your spirit being with them there. And so we commit one another to you now, Lord, asking you to go before us, to bless each situation that we find ourselves in. And we pray that this, uh, the sermon that we've heard this morning and the atmosphere that we've enjoyed in your presence may be with us throughout this coming week, because we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's just say the grace to one another, shall we? The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Now, our resident brewer is on holiday, but we have a very good standing at the back there. I can vouch for it, having worked for her in her house, she's a good brewer. Uh, so you're welcome to have a brew at the back, and the Lord be with you all. Good morning, everybody. Nice to see you all online. Hope you're all well. Margaret, hope you and, you and Kath are having a great holiday. And we'll oh, see you soon. It's great. When you it's come lovely, back. wet and windy. I'm going to hand over to Kath and you both, Jeff. And then you can uh, carry on nattering for a bit if you like. Thank you, John. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, yeah. Jeff Post. Thank you very much. I am the host. Oh, my pictures are not good. We've lost you, Jeff. I'm back again. Oh, you're back again. We're getting that sound, aren't we? Don't play it. Now put your picture on. What's that? We've got Yvonne. We haven't got none. Hi, Yvonne. Cool. Hi, love. <laughs> Are you all right? Come out, stick it to pieces and have a look. Yeah. Wow. I just want to come and give you a hug. <laughs> You're sending your hugs. Two hugs on the airwaves. They were yeah. all, they were all, that last one, I don't know, you know. Oh, I couldn't sing it. No. 